first in high definition from the station on your side. This is Wavy News 10. A man pinned under a burning car. You'll see how strangers saved his life. And tanks filled with an explosive gas outside a warehouse went up in flames. When I seen the flames and looked and seen the, the tanks, I knew it was, you know, it would be harmful for everybody. But Hear from workers of nearby businesses that had to leave for their own safety. Plus, a barge hit the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel, how it happened, and the damage from the impact. But first, this really could have been a major explosion in Norfolk. Yeah, it took firefighters several hours to get the situation under control after acetylene tanks caught fire outside East Coast Repair and Fabrication on Curlew Drive at 8 this morning. Ten of your side's Melanie Woodrow joins us now with the latest. Melanie, fire officials told you they just couldn't put out that fire? No, they couldn't. They needed to let the pressure in the acetylene tanks get down to a level that would be safe for them to begin fighting those flames. Acetylene, by the way, is a gas that's used in welding. When it mixes with oxygen, it creates a flame, except the flames that were out here this morning were not intended. From Chopper 10, you can see firefighters on the ground trying to control the flames and what could have been an explosive situation. When I seen the flames and looked and seen the the tanks, I knew it was, you know, would be harmful for everybody because the, uh, if it explode, it's going to shoot off like a torpedo. Robert Deva and Martha Heiser were two employees forced out of a building near East Coast Repair and Fabrication on Curlew Drive. Around 8 a.m., four acetylene tanks outside the building began venting fire. A lot of smoke coming out from our backside. Thick black smoke. Mm -hmm. Were you worried? Oh, no, not really. It was just fascinating to see something going on first thing in the morning. First responders evacuated each business and home within a half mile radius, fearing the worst. Later, only those directly around the building had to stay out. We don't want the tanks to explode. We would much rather have them vent. Once it was safe, Chief Harry Worley said firefighters turned off the valves on four other nearby tanks and began flame control. Owner George Rivera said everyone was safe. How long have you been the owner of this business? Since 2004. Anything like this ever happened before? No. Do, do you think something was wrong with the tanks? What do you think happened? No, it's brand new system. Rivera and Norfolk Fire and Rescue are now investigating what could have ignited the tanks. And so far, they have not determined the cause, but fire investigators are telling me they do not believe that there's any suspicious activity that occurred out here this morning. Coming up tonight, new at 6, hear from one of the employees who told me that he attempted to put out this fire before firefighters arrived. Reporting live in Norfolk, Melanie Woodrow, 10 on your side. And that could have been very dangerous as well. We'll look forward to seeing that. Meanwhile, a scary afternoon at a Virginia Beach school. The principal of Hermitage Elementary reportedly spotted a suspicious device near the bus loop around 3 this afternoon. Now, it was just before dismissal time, so the children got on the buses somewhere else. The fire, the fire department later determined that device was not a threat. Newport News Police made an arrest in connection with the discovery of a newborn baby's remains. Officers charged 20-year-old Devon Robbins with concealing a dead body. Police say Robbins is the mother of the baby boy found dead on Woodbridge Drive in May. Police say they are still investigating. It may be a little slower for those driving across the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel, at least on the southbound side over the next few days, and this is why. A barge slammed into that span. These pictures come from Chopper 10 shortly after the accident. Let's on your side's Walter Hildebrand shows us what happened and what's next for the CBBT. From Chopper 10, you can see the barge that hit the southbound span of the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel. The impact happened early this morning, about three quarters of a mile south of the Third Island. It wasn't a runaway barge or anything like that. They were under tow with a tugboat and just had operator error basically. It wasn't unusual to be this close to the span. The barge operated by Skanska taking part in scour remediation. That's where rocks and concrete are dropped around the pylons to strengthen the trestles beneath the bridge. Caused fairly uh, significant damage to that one particular pile, although not to the rest of the structure. We haven't been able to ascertain as of yet what kind of uh, repair methodology that we'll need to use. We've had some divers uh, from Crofton Diving inspecting the pile all the way from the bay bottom up just to make sure that there's nothing else going on below the waterline that we can't see in addition to, to what's obvious above the waterline. 
To be on the safe side, crews closed that section of the southbound span for a while. Drivers had to alternate with northbound vehicles for most of the morning. The big question now, is it safe for drivers? Certainly while it needs to be repaired, it's safe for vehicles to drive on the southbound span, but we're having them stay you know, to the right-hand lane on that section of the facility, just to not put any extra stress on, on the left-hand side where the, the damage pile was at. The good news is it shouldn't take long to fix, and all we're told it should take about five days. In Virginia Beach, Walter Hildebrand, 10 on your side. Skanska, the company doing the restoration, will be responsible for repairs to that bridge. We'll keep you posted. Another barge hit the middle of that span between the two islands back in June. CBBT police say the northbound or shut down the northbound lanes for several hours as crews work to secure the barge in that case. A Newport newsman is behind bars in Gloucester County accused of soliciting a minor through his computer. A 16-year-old girl says Warder Wright posted several inappropriate sexual comments about her on Facebook. Deputies say the teen knew Wright because he took school pictures at several schools on the Northern Neck. Deputies arrested him on Saturday and took a computer, external hard drive, and a cell phone from his home. Wright used the Facebook account GNG Images and the Yahoo account Steelers Fan 882002. If you know any children who may have had contact with Wright through these accounts, call police. Deputies in Gloucester County say they solved a recent burglary spree. The suspects, two boys, 17. Detectives say they hit homes and businesses between August 16th and August 21st, taking a gun, ammunition, iPods, GPS units, among other things. Many of the items have been recovered, and there could be more arrests. Hampton police are still searching for the gunman who shot a man who crashed his car into a home. The story was breaking news last night at 5. Detectives say the victim was shot inside his car on Hollywood Avenue. 23-year-old Newport newsman then crashed his car into a home on Gloucester Street. Emergency crews took the victim to the hospital. He is expected to survive. Two homes were hit by the gunfire. No one else was hurt. If you have any information, call the crime line. And the USS Newport News is headed home. That fast attack sub will return to Naval Station Norfolk Thursday. Now this is video from when the crew left back in February. During deployment, the USS Newport News supported national and maritime security interests. Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad told NBC's Ann Curry today two American hikers arrested and convicted on spy-related charges could be freed in a matter of days. Shane Bauer and jo Josh Fatal were arrested more than two years ago while they were hiking along Iraq's unmarked northern border with Iran. They denied any wrongdoing. A defense attorney for the two hikers said an Iranian court set bail of $500,000 each. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton hopes for a quick release. We have followed this uh, uh, very closely and uh, we are encouraged by what uh, the Iranian government uh, has said today. Uh, but I'm not going to comment further than that. Uh, we obviously hope that uh, uh, we will see a, a positive outcome from what appears to be uh, a decision by the government. Sarah Shord, the third member of the group, was released under a similar plan last year. Driver confusion. Ten on your side received calls about the stop sign at this Virginia Beach intersection, so we checked it out. We'll show you what Andy Fox caught on tape. And a cashier at Walgreens says she was sacked for eating a bag of chips she later paid for. Why this woman says that that was medically necessary. And a look at the precipitation averages for Norfolk. Norfolk's doing great as far as rainfall. We're well above normal, a little below normal for so far uh, for the month. And Elizabeth City, a little below normal, but way below normal for the year. Any rain in sight? Yeah, some other big changes in our forecast. You're watching Wavy News 10 at 5 with Tom Shad, Nicole Libus, and Super Doppler 10 Chief Meteorologist Don Slater. On your side with this consumer alert, Japanese automaker Subaru is recalling nearly 200,000 legacy and outback vehicles. A defect with the windshield wipers in 2010 and 2011 models. Apparently, the bottom cover of the motor can overheat and cause fires. It can also cause visibility problems leading to crashes. So Subaru plans to notify vehicle owners starting in November. 
The FDA just approved a drug that's showing promise as a treatment for lymphoma. This is a patient scan in January before he started taking the drug called Etcetris. The black spots are all tumors. That patient's Hodgkin's lymphoma is now in remission. I don't have fevers, you know. Um, I don't have tumors, actual tumors in my body. I don't feel lumps anymore. This is the first one that's brought me as close to remission as possible, so I'm happy. Doctors hope to start clinical trials to test how this drug does earlier in the disease process. The drug is the first treatment to combat Hodgkin's lymphoma approved by the FDA since 1977. Well, eating a bag of chips is not usually grounds to fire someone, but it happened to a drugstore cashier in California. Josefina Hernandez worked at this San Francisco Walgreens for 18 years. The now former employee says that she has diabetes. She reached for a, a piece of candy in her pocket. She didn't have one. She normally has one there. She didn't have one. So she grabbed a $1.39 bag of chips there by the register and ate some to raise her blood sugar to avert an emergency. Al Hernandez says that she was fired for eating the chips she paid for before eating or eating them, and she paid for them after uh, she ate the chips. The lawsuit claims that Walgreens did not accommodate the woman's disability. She wants her job back. No comment from Walgreens. When I got robbed last year, I, was, I went down the street at the wrong time, obviously at night. Keeping students safe, a top priority for police in Norfolk. New at 530, how officers are teaming up with the city's college, college students to crack down on crime. And you could call it superhero strength. We'll show you how a group of bystanders rescued a man trapped underneath that burning car. If all the traffic's backing up on Laskin, explain to me why the stop sign's on Laskin. Why isn't the stop sign on Arctic? A lot of you have called us about this. Ten on your side investigating. That story coming up. Configuration confusion in Virginia Beach. Drivers contact at 10 on your side about the stop sign at the intersection of Laskin Road and Arctic Avenue. They say the stop sign is in the wrong place. We sent Andy Fox down to the oceanfront to look into this for us. So Andy, what did you find out? Well, I found out that the city obviously knows there's a problem out here. They have this flag up here. They have a larger than usual stop sign. This sign, cross traffic does not stop, reminding drivers on Laskin Road the traffic's coming this way without a stop sign. But we also found that a lot of people put the exact problem of this entire traffic situation at the foot of Virginia Beach City Government. This is an everyday occurrence at Laskin Road and Arctic Avenue. Every one of these cars blowing through the stop sign on Laskin Road. Many drivers think the stop signs now on Laskin should actually be on Arctic where there's less traffic, more natural to stop. This is Cindy. I think these two should Absolutely. have to stop and let us go straight Our through. Our four-way at least. Visitors from Pennsylvania. Down this block twice and I thought the first time it was just a fluke. Apparently not. This driver, too. He should have the right of way. Right! You hear that? He should have the right of way. Why? Because that's where all the traffic is. Look, there's Arctic. There's no one coming. There is little traffic on Arctic Avenue. There's a lot of traffic on Laskin, and Laskin has the stop sign. Kim saw three accidents at this intersection last Friday. Usually, Laskin drivers who stop, then go, then hit the traffic with the right of way coming from Arctic. To make this the through street and make a stop sign on Arctic. And you are not a traffic engineer. <laughs> no. It seems very simple to you. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot less traffic on Arctic. During our two minute, 15 second interview with Kim, not one car came down Arctic, not one. This is the first car right here Correct. since we've been talking, right here. And there's no traffic on Arctic. No. So you're saying put up the stop sign there. Correct. So here we are at the stop sign. The big question is, what is the city government Virginia Beach doing about this in order to make sure that the problems resolve. Coming up tonight on Wavy News 10 x 6, exactly what they are doing to make this situation better and exactly what they're saying about it. If you've been out here on Laskin Road, you know there's a huge problem out here. This stop sign, when many argue the stop sign should be over on the less traveled Arctic Avenue. In Virginia Beach, Andy Fox, 10 on your side. Now, in high definition, your Super Dot for 10 forecast with Chief Meteorologist Don Slater.
And very Andy is standing right now. We did have a little rain earlier, but that's all gone now. Skies uh, clear to partly cloudy throughout the area. Here is that rainfall. Again, over the oceanfront area, a couple of little spots of rain, but that's it. Unlike yesterday, where we had two, three inches of rain across some parts of the area, all is very, very quiet for today. Now, we got some late information uh, uh, compiled in terms of what was going on uh, with Irene on the Outer Banks, especially in terms of tidal surge. There are a few, very few tidal tidal cages uh, in the North Carolina sounds on the sound side. On the ocean side, we got a lot of them. Uh, Hatteras, Oregon Inlet, all the way on up to Duck. So again, a lot of them on the uh, ocean side, uh, but very few tidal gauges in the North Carolina sounds. So the tidal surge must be measured after the storm by site surveys. National Weather Service people co go out there, have a look at how high the water got. Not the waves on top of the water, but just how high uh, the water got. And generally, into the Hatteras area, and Hatteras Hatteras Village up to uh, Rodanthe, Buxton, and then Rodanthe, around five to as high as nine and a half feet. And that was from either side, from the ocean or the sounds. And then farther north, as we get north of Ocracoke, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, Oregon Inlet, uh, we're looking at five feet to around seven feet. It was 4.83 feet at Manio uh, and 7.23 at Colley, uh, Collington Harbor. So generally five to seven. So again, uh, 7.30 in the morning, it made landfall. Uh, this is going back to September uh, 27th, Saturday. Day. There's where things are during the late morning. The eye stalled and it prolonged our easterly wind flow into the area uh, that we had throughout the region. Now, here's where we are during the afternoon hours. That's when we really started seeing that northwesterly surge uh, on the backside of the storm. 15 mile an hour movement. It maintains its dangerous look. Moves across the Albemarle Sound just south of Elizabeth City. That's where we saw the five to seven foot surge uh, anywhere north of Oregon Inlet. It's still 80 mile an hour winds and the tide was rising rapidly into the Hampton Roads area at that point. And then by 8.30 at night, that was our high tide, we saw a 7.55 surge that was just below the peak of Isabel, which was at 7.89. And then we added up with still some strong northwesterly winds, but it uh, brought the tide out. Uh, but again, uh, we ended up with some more trees down on those strong northwesterly winds. What's going on with Tropical Storm Maria? Uh, well, I get to the here and now on what's to come. 50 mile an hour winds out of this thing. Still moving northward now, but starting to move a bit, and there's where things are by uh, Wednesday afternoon, tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock, way up into here, 60 mile an hour winds, and then it just plain motors on off. There's where things are uh, in terms of the forecast models. And what's going on for us? I want to show you that we've got some big, big changes coming up for Thursday night. There's a cold front that's going to be barreling down into our area by Thursday evening, and that will really, really cool things on down for the weekend. Now, today we were basically into the mid 80s. Here's what's going on for tomorrow. I'll Upper 80s, around 90, 85 on Thursday. But then Thursday night, the wind picks up and the temperature plummets. We end up with some scattered light showers Friday, Saturday, and much cooler. All right, welcome fall. Good Samaritans run to the rescue of a man trapped underneath this fireball. My rescuers, they did a great job of getting him uh, the help that he needed. Wow, you're going to see how a group of bystanders saved this biker's life. They've been surrounded by technology their whole life. Now teachers are using that technology to help educate their students. See the new twist that's bringing fun to the classroom. A TV News helicopter filmed a two-hour police pursuit involving two cars and two crashes and helped officers keep track of that driver there. Police say this yellow Porsche was stolen. The chase reached speeds of 100 miles per hour. The driver hit a fence lost a wheel and spun out. Look at that. And when the Porsche stopped that driver, he jumped out, he ran, and then jumped into a Jeep. The driver eventually lost control of that vehicle and crashed. That's when officers arrested him. Woo. And how about this? They did not have much time to react here. We want to warn you, you might find some of this video disturbing. A driver, though, did survive here. It all unfolded Monday in Utah when a motorcycle hit a car and burst into flames. And here's what happened next. Someone in a nearby office building grabbed his video camera and caught this. Look at these guys, all good Samaritans, rescuing the driver who is pinned underneath, a 21-year-old man on that motorcycle, and that car is in flames. A group of about a dozen men and women lifted the car up and pulled the man out. He was unconscious, but alive. I'm impressed that they would risk their safety. To, to lift the car up and 
and get the individual out from underneath it. And they didn't have much time, but they reacted fast. The motorcycle driver is listed in critical condition in the hospital. He does say that he's grateful for the help of strangers. The driver of the car wasn't hurt. While you're picking out your pumpkin for Halloween, you can also grab some trimmings for your Christmas tree. We'll tell you what stores are already getting in the holiday spirit and why so early. We ask that every year, don't we? <laughs> Security screening at the nation's airports about the change for children. What changes you could see the next time your family flies? That's still ahead at 5.30. Test check, one, two, three, four. Uh, uh, test, one, two, three, four. One. Haven't gotten it on yet, but it's on. One, two, three, four, five. No football for Santa. He's apparently now a fixture in September. It's not even officially fall, but it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas in stores anyway. Holiday merchandise has been on sale in Costco since the first of the month. Some Home Depots, well, they're going to roll out Christmas offers on September 19th. Kmart, Walmart, Sears, JCPenney will all start selling Christmas items before the end of this month. More than a third of shoppers plan to buy some Christmas items before Halloween. You can rent cars, movies, video games. Could books be next? Amazon is considering an e-reader rental service like Netflix. The Wall Street Journal reports the company has reached out to publishers about the idea. The subscription library service for older books would be available to customers of Amazon Prime, which offers movies and TV shows for $79 a year. Amazon is the maker of the popular Kindle. The company already lets students rent textbooks. Stay with us. Wavy News 10 at 530 starts right now.